God's rage. The rich will be sent away empty. Jesus uses a parable to warn against identifying the worth of one's life with the value of one's possessions rather than one's relationship with God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. And because God's word, you fool, has so truly exposed my condition, the rest of his declaration rings true as well. This very night, your life is demanded of you. I'm out of time. The gig is up. There's nothing I can do. The end has rushed in on me. I've no more opportunity to get my act together. I've been repentant. That is, my mortality 
has been thrust upon me. I am dust, and to dust I shall return much sooner than I ever expected. God's Word does that, you know. It exposes you for what you are, a sinner dead in your sin. Jesus is addressing covetousness, and he makes his address vivid and all-encompassing by the use of this parable. Jesus means to take in all those, all those who have more than a day's supply of daily bread. The rich man has no name. He could just as well be me, or you, or any one of us with a granary or a bank account. But notice this. There is no censure attached to his riches. It's no crime to have money. Abraham was a rich man. So this certain rich man is not being accused of robbing the poor or cheating his neighbors. His situation is that of respectability, honesty, and uprightness within his community. Perhaps many envied him. The man is depicted fairly as being concerned in a genuine quandary about his newfound abundance and its increase in his wealth. Even the covetousness he expresses by his inner dialogue with his soul is not repulsive, though the years have taught us to hear it as selfish, I, my, my, etc. Jesus tells us a parable about covetousness in its most innocent and innocuous form. We, should, we would not think twice about this incident were it not for the word of God pronounced upon this situation. You fool, God says. You fool. This very night your life is being demanded of you. To this man, who could just as well be me, or you, or any one of us caught up in the myriad of innocent and innocuous conversations we have with ourselves, to one such as I, to ones such as you, God says, you fool. And in so saying, tells us the truth about ourselves. We do not belong to ourselves. Anything and everything we accumulate, even our lives and their goodness, are possessions of another. We belong to God. We belong to God for Him to do with as He wishes. Remember that concluding line from another parable? Am I not allowed to do what I want with what is mine? Oli went out on a mission. He was going to have a conversation with God. And so he says to God, God, we don't need you anymore. We humans have figured out the secret of life. We're able to create...